Yeah, we're live. We're live. Okay, are we in the right stream? Let's check that. I okay, think so, yes. Hi, so I guess we are live. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to Brawl VM 22.2 release stream. My name is Lina Renko. I'm developer advocate for Brawl VM at Oracle Labs. And here with me is my colleague, Fabio. Hi, Fabio. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yes, and we are here to talk to you about what's new in VM 22.2. As you can tell, today we are in slightly limited capacity. It's just me and Fabio, but we have a lot of exciting things to talk about, so uh, let's do it. And one more side note for me, we are testing slightly different streaming setup today. So if at any point you stop hearing us or seeing us, please tell us and we will try to fix that. So let's go. So today we are releasing Roll VM 22.2. As always, you can get ABUBs 11 and 17, and there are multiple ways how you can get the actual builds. You can get them from GitHub, that will be a Roll VM Community Edition. For Roll VM Enterprise, you can get them from Oracle Technology Network. You can also install with our VS Code extensions or with Homebrew on macOS. And now let's see this insight. So the first thing we want to talk about is that now we have a smaller base for the um, JDK distribution. So the base distribution is now more, more modular in a way that it no longer includes components like JavaScript runtime, LLVM runtime, and Visual VM. If you were using those previously, don't worry, they're still available and they are just one comment away. So like when you are installing components like Python or Ruby with GU, by saying GU install in the component name, the same way now you can install things like JavaScript runtime and LVM runtime. So they're still available, but what this change means that is that if you're a Java developer, so if you're running applications on Go VM JDK, or if you are using it to build native executables, what you get now is a much smaller base distribution. And to back up that much smaller statement with some numbers, let's look at compare JDK sizes in different Go VM releases. So when we are looking at 20.2, we can see that the base JDK download for various platforms that we see on the left is now, the size, the size is now around 200, let's say 50 megabytes, while previously it was around 400 megabytes even more. So now the base download is almost, almost uh, twice smaller. And I think this will be a great change for those who are using Roll VM for local developments, experience, and also it should make Roll VM, uh, using Roll VM way easier for setting up in your CI CD pipelines because the base download size got so much smaller. So let us know what you think about this change in comments here or on our Slack GitHub. So Fabio, you have any opinions about this change or should we move on yeah. to the next one? I think you introduced it well. I, the only thing I, I can add to this is that the native image component is now slightly bigger because all of the substrate VM, so the component that actually replaces the runtime, uh, is now also part of this installable. So the overall size should still be uh, should still be small. And uh, yeah, as you said, this is good for the ICD setups. Um, just faster downloads and also yeah, if the network connection is not that good then um yeah you you'll appre you'll appreciate that change i think yeah right and i think if we have a question about java 17 lts support so we do have builds available for java version 17 and in terms of support and release roadmap we have this outlined on our website so if you look for girl vm roadmap you will see when the next releases are coming at and information about support of various versions. Yeah, so feel free to drop any questions that you might have in the YouTube chat. We are monitoring that. Yes, true. Okay, let's look what else is new. Now, another change is something I'm super excited about. So that is related to making more libraries supported by native image. So as you might know, during the build process, what Native Image does, it is trying to find all the reachable code starting from the main entry point of your application to then include and compile only that reachable code in your final produced native executable. And that is basically by this approach, that is how Native Image 
uh, achieves this great startup performance and resources usage. But what this also means is that some of those more dynamic Java features, such as reflection or serialization, are a bit challenging in that regard because uh, native image generator needs to know if you want to use such elements at the image build time to include them. Otherwise, if you would like to access such element and runtime and you haven't told us this by producing configuration and giving it to us at the build time, it may lead to failures when you're trying to access such an element at the image runtime. So to avoid that, what you could do is you could, you could give us this configuration and it could be coming from one of the frameworks using the frameworks, or you can produce such configuration manually. And another way you can do is you can trade if you can leverage our tracing agent to use that configuration automatically. So those few uh, ways simplify producing such configuration, but we want to simplify it for you. And for that, we are introducing this new role, VM reachability metadata repo, which is a centralized repo that can be used by library and primary work authors, but also native image users to use and share native image metadata information among their projects. So let's take a look at the repo itself. Okay, but I'm sharing one tab, so probably I won't be able to demo it. I can do it, okay. no problem. Okay, uh, can you screen and I will give screen sharing to you. Yes. And in the meantime, I'm seeing some exciting comments. Let me just stop my screen sharing and let me yeah, bring this. Okay, go ahead and please share. So yes. Share with you. Yeah, so this is the repository. Uh, you can find it under Oracle Gravium Reachability Metadata. And it, um, yeah, looks harmless. And um, yeah, you can, yeah, there's a readme that shows you, like, that gives you just a little introduction how this works. So if, you, if you're curious how to contribute, uh, there's a com contributor guide uh, that shows you how to contribute. But first of all, we w I want to show you how you can actually use this. So, um, of course, the most interesting directory here is metadata. And here we can have a look at the initial set of metadata uh, uh, that we have for, for different libraries, uh, one of which is this H2 database. Uh, so for this in here, there's a different, there's a metadata for this specific library in a specific version, and uh, we can use this. But the, the coolest thing is that we have completely integrated this into our native build tools. So you don't need, as a user of this or as a consumer, you don't need to interact with, uh, with this repository at all. So let me pull up my Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code. So this is uh, VS Code. And uh, here I'm looking at the repository of the native build tools. And in here are actually different examples. So um, yeah, you can, you can see them here on the left. But uh, we're looking at the metadata repo integration, uh, which is exactly um, about this new feature. So this is the um, this is the build tool, and in here is the an H2 example. So in this H2 example, uses this H2 database um, to like do some database stuff, like clean up and insert some data and then read the data. So and when I run this. Um, let me run this real quick. So with Gradle Native Run, I've already compiled all of the uh, native parts uh, to speed up the demo. But when I run this, um, you can see that, yeah, well, it didn't build anything, but then I ran the binary and the binary failed. So this is a typical case where like something is missing in terms of metadata. So in this case, um, probably some, some resource or some reflector, some reflection um, mechanism that's that's not being caught up. But so the build succeeds. I can build a native image out of our native executable out of my Java application. But then when I run it, I get an error because something uh, didn't work. And in this case, yeah, there's this uh, here's a null pointer exception because it's trying to read a file. So apparently here's a resource missing or something like this. So um, this is what uh, some users see from time to time and we get some error reports. And this is exactly um, where this new metadata repository can come in. So if we look at the Gradle config, uh, you can see I already commented this out because this is the demo and uh, well, it's supposed to be working by default. So when I enable this and we mentioned metadata repository enable true and rerun all of that it should work so let's see what what's actually going on so first of all i need to rebuild um 
the binary. And of course, I'm using the latest release here. I'm also using um, the new quick build mode. And you can see that here. So that's, it's running a bit faster. In case you're wondering, I'm also not building on my local machine. I'm, I'm working on a remote machine. So this is an, a free a, A1 machine on Oracle Cloud on OCI. And um, you can see this here. I'm actually running Arch64 on this machine. So um, there's also been some updates for this build output. So it's now listing uh, the compiler and, uh, and the garbage collector that are being used. Um, so let's see, um, yeah, while this is running, uh, what's actually going on here. I mean, it looks like magic, right? So you're just enabling using the repo with one command and it should just work. Yes. Well, in the in the background, it uh, clones this repository. Our native build tools clones this metadata repository and matches your dependencies that are defined in either your Gradle or your your Maven config, and uh, and tries to find appropriate configurations. So um, yeah, now we we have already gone through the analysis, and the native libraries have moved uh, further down. So now you get to see the full list of native libraries used for building this. And eventually we should end up with a binary. Let's see, is there any support for Maven? Uh, yes, there is. So the native uh, build tools support both um, a Maven and a Gradle plugin, uh, which you can use. I'm actually um, taking the Maven plugin for a spin in just a bit. So what has happened? Uh, well, we have created an image, 35 megabytes, and here's the... Uh, the breakdowns, um, yeah, this this ran fine, really just fine on this machine. You can see this is on a remote machine. And uh, so the image was created in a minute and 37 uh, seconds. And now we ran the, the, the binary, well, finally we did, and now everything works. So this is the indeed running um, image now. And all I had to do is enable and opt in into this metadata repository. And um, I, I think this is a this is a great and very promising start. Um, and yeah, we are of course looking forward to uh, to contributions. I already mentioned on the website you can learn how how to contribute your own configurations for certain um, libraries and frameworks. So you can, for instance, generate them with a tracing agent, and then you can contribute them here. And uh, once you've done that, everyone else who's using the same dependency will will benefit from from your contribution. Alina, did I miss anything? No, sounds good. I do want to add a few things, though. So one yes. is we have a great blog post about this metadata repo and how one can contribute and use metadata. So if you go to our Medium page, right, Medium Girl VM, that's one of the newly published blog posts. That's one thing. And another thing is Fabio mentioned contributions. So we do welcome contributions for every, from everyone, right? That's how we want to build out that repo. But also, even the way it is right now, it was also a community project. So it was built by us at Oracle Labs in collaboration with the Spring Boot and Corpus teams. So huge thanks to them for supporting this important community initiative. And uh, yes, I think that's all I wanted to add about this repo. So any questions about this, or should we move on to the next update? Let me screen share again in the meantime. How will those contributions be verified? Good question. So uh, in the repo, we have this contributing process, right? You can send your contributions. I think we also ask you to provide tests to verify your PR, but also those reviewed by other teams, any other contributions. Yeah, so just open a pull request and we run all the tests on GitHub actions and make sure that the configs that you're providing are actually working. And uh, yeah, then we then we merge all of this. Yes. Okay, and let me start sharing again. Okay, if this is not freezing, no, I think we are back live. So this was about the metadata repo, and we showed you the repo itself, right? And this is the blog post I'm talking about. So please go ahead and check out this as well. Now, uh, the next thing is related to native image and also related to developer experience improvements. Okay, am I sharing the right tab though? Because in my it doesn't look correct. Okay, does it look to you? Yeah, it uh, looks okay for me. We are sharing the full screen. 
Okay, good because okay, I'm checking my phone and doesn't look so good to me, but yeah, okay, but enough. Anyway, going back to 2022 and updates in that. So another update related to Nancy Inch and uh, uh, is that uh, due to several improvements that we made to internal data structures, it is now possible to build native to run native image builds, right? So to build executables in more resources constrained environments, so the cloud services or GitHub action. As an example, you can now build even the larger Java applications uh, with something like two gigabytes of Java here. As an example here, we ran the Spring Pathetic application with two gigs of memory. And this is the build output we are looking at. And if I just scroll it a bit to the right to see information time spent and memory used, right? So for various build stages, I can see that for each of them, we are staying below two gigs, which is a really great improvement for many, many applications. Yeah, just to be clear that uh, um, if you run this on your machine, you might actually see more memory being used. Native image will still try and use as uh, much memory as it's available on your system or it, it, as it can handle and thinks it's uh, good to speed up your build. But um, yeah, if you want to reproduce something like this, you, you either need to run on a memory constrained system that only has two gigabytes, like a Docker container, or you set the max heap size of your Java runtime uh, of the native image build uh, and uh, and then run the build. So I think this is this is great news, especially uh, because now you can build on uh, lower powered machines and in cloud machines or virtualized machines like Docker containers, which is quite common, or even something like GitHub Actions. So now uh, we can finally build very big um, uh, Java applications and turn them into native executables and in something like uh, GitHub Actions for free. Um, so let's see. Uh, Rotonator says that is nice. Uh, yep. Um, he already ran into problems, yes, um, when building on Raspberry Pis. That's, uh, of course, a very interesting use case. Um, by the way, uh, you can also build them on, on these Arch64 A1 machines on OCI and then copy over the binary and run it on your Raspberry Pi. But yeah, running on Raspberry Pis is certainly uh, interesting. And um, yeah, uh, what else is there? Well, Frank, I think we already answered your question uh, regarding Maven support. Yes, Maven is also supported by the native build tools. Yes, so. and I see a question about of any repo or ProVM project examples. Um, so we do have a separate repo of VM demos, right? So if, even if you just look up for GraalVM demos on GitHub, you should be able to find it. And there we have sample applications for all capabilities and components of GraalVM. So hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, that is that. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the new memory requirements. Let's move on, but do ask us questions if you have more questions related to this update. And moving on, another great news related to native image is that now it's possible to dump heap of native executables and then further re uh, analyze them in tools like Visual VM, Ingral VM, Community Edition. So uh, it's not possible, and not only it's possible, but also there are multiple ways of how you can do it. So it can be done by using command line option or programmatically. And I will give it back to Fabio now to show us how exactly to do it. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see this? Uh, I think I can. So I see Graal VM or yes. Yes. yes, we're looking at the we're looking at the getting started page of the native image docs. Before we dig into the uh, heap dumps feature, I quickly wanted to mention that we completely re rammed the documentation for native image. So uh, yeah, check check this out on the website. There's new categories, uh, for instance, about reachability metadata, uh, how to use all of this, um, what the build output means that you can see, and some really um, simple basics that you should get familiar with when you start using native image. And I think one of the coolest things that we have now is uh, a list, and a, I think a pretty long list with different guides, how-to guides, how to use native image. So a uh, big shout out to the team and uh, 
and our docs people. So if you're looking at the list, there's like, how do I debug native, ex native executables? But uh, yeah, Alina already mentioned, we wanted to look into uh, heap dumps. So uh, what, we can, what we can learn here on this page is that there are three different ways to create heap dumps. To enable heap dump, we always need to build with allow VM inspection. And then we can either dump the heap of the initial executable before running it. We can send uh, user one as a signal to the process um, to trigger a heap dump. Um, or we can even do heap dumps pro programmatically. And I'm going to show you one and three. So let's see if I can find uh, my VS code. So yeah, here's my VS code. And I'm looking at uh, my heap dump example, which is actually a Micronaut, the Micronaut example. So uh, this is a simple Micronaut service here. And uh, I've, all I've changed is I've added this allow VM inspection flag to the build config of my native build tools. So here I'm using the Maven integration as promised. And uh, I already I already built all of this to speed up the demo. So um, when I when I run this, uh, yeah, this is the this is the service um, running on on the uh, remote machine. Um, but um, yeah, I what I want to show is I can create a heap dump. Um, so that was the heap dump. And now here's a new file in my directory which I can download. So uh, I can download this somewhere on my machine. And let's see on a different screen, or maybe not. Yes, and then I can open up this uh, this uh, heap dump. So let's see, here's the heap dump. So, um, and what we can do is we can dig into this one and we can see like a bunch of stuff. So for instance, when you look at the build output, you may find that there are some byte arrays which are rather big. You can actually get to see them here. So if I like dig into this one, of course I can look into the the um, yeah the elements of this byte array. But uh, more importantly, here we're looking at uh, image heap info. So apparently this is used internally, I think, uh, for something. And what else? So there's there's not much going on in here. Oh, here's a Java string, which is rather big. But yeah, this is the this is the um, normal heap dump functionality. One thing that I like to note is right now there's a uh, th there's a known issue uh, the heap dump algorithm um, yeah pollutes the uh, pollutes the, um, um, the heap dumps a little bit. So in here because we're not doing much, uh, we can see the heap dump um, algorithm or, or the implementation of this recording itself. but this is not so much of a problem here because uh, yeah we're looking at this, Micronaut example. So in this Micronaut application, there's a, there's a uh, there's a controller with conferences and an endpoint that allows you to get a random conference. And if we look at the implementation, we can see a list of these conferences. And uh, so when I go back to my Visual VM and I can type in conference here in the lower part, um, then we can see that this is indeed. Um, an uninitialized application. So there are no instances of either of these things. So there's no conference array, there's no conference, nothing is going on. All of this is initialized uh, at, at runtime. So when the, when the application runs. So, um, uh, so that takes me to the other bit. So we can fire up the service and I can open this in my browser. So uh, here's the service and I can go and uh, look for conferences and I need to go and say random. So now I get a random conference every time I click on this. But what I've done in this ser service actually is I've extended um, this uh, the service with a new dump heap endpoint and the implementation is actually taken from this guide. So if we scroll all the way down to how to programmatically create uh, heap dumps, uh, we can find out that there's this VM runtime dump heap uh, API, and uh, here's this method uh, that uses it. So here's the here's the call, and I copied over all of this into this endpoint. So that's the same source. So now I have an endpoint that always cre that creates a heap dump every time I call it, uh, and I can trigger it from here by going and say dump heap. And now I've created a new heap dump uh, just by requesting an endpoint in this Micronaut application. So we also see the size. So when I do this multiple times, we can see now the heap has grown and the heap grows and continues to grow. And let me do another one and another one and another one. And eventually now this has uh, just seen a garbage collect. 
So if I so so now there's no like trash anymore in this in, in this uh, heap dump. Uh, if I wanted to avoid this, I could have set this flag to true, which always sets uh, which always does a full GC before it actually dumps your heap. But sometimes you also want to see um, the the uh, young living objects and and how they um, yeah uh, behave in your application. So I've already downloaded one of these uh, heap dumps. Um, so this is this is the one that I took earlier today, and uh, yeah, it works the same way. So this is taken at runtime, and um, I can go and search for conference again. And when I do this, we can see there are indeed seven different conferences. So let's see. Uh, here's the list of conferences. Uh, so that's the source, and uh, yeah, I should have yeah maybe moved this a bit up. So here are seven conferences, and they should all line up. So if we see here, here's Oracle. Cool. One, what is this called today, Alina? Yeah, it's Java One and very quick add join the GraalVM team at Java One to learn <laughs> what will be in GraalVM and Java One. All right. Oh yeah, these are indeed the conferences from, from up here. So uh, this was a heap dump or this is indeed a heap dump of the running application. Here's the, the conference array that includes these seven elements. So these are identical. And we can even see like the conference controller and the conference service and, and so forth. So um, this is all now supported in, um, in native image um, with GraalVM Community Edition and GraalVM Enterprise Edition. And um, yeah, we are going to fix the pollution problem, hopefully with the next release. And uh, yeah, we'll, um, yeah and, and there's some other options like uh, heap dump on out of memory which is also kind of useful in some, in some cases. Um, and uh, yeah, we're working on that as well. So let's see, lots of comments in, this, um, in the chat. Any recommendation for Docker on Apple Silicon? Uh, well, I don't know what the, state of the, what the status is of Docker on Apple Silicon, to be honest. Um, yeah, I guess that should work. Apple has visual, uh, visualization uh, frameworks that should all support uh, running other um, running other architectures, and you can even build, I think, for other architectures too. Uh, did you see any other questions? So the last one, right? So, so there are a few comments, but there is also one specific to the heap dump question. Uh, are there any restrictions or missing data in the heap dump when created out of native image, or is this the same as creating it of a JVM? Yes, it's a uh, Pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. It's even the same file format. So you can use any tool that can read HProf uh, heap dumps, so not just Visual VM, uh, and uh, yeah, play play around with that. And uh, yes, we had well, that's the that's the general goal that we have for native image. We want to be as compatible as possible with the Java ecosystem, so that um, yeah, well, for developers, it shouldn't make a difference whether you run on the JVM or whether you, you run uh, natively using native image. Uh, what else? Um, Docker alternative 22.1 had occasional failures. Um, yes, well, I think we should move on uh, because regarding, uh, regarding A1 machines, we also have an update, right? A1 machines? I don't think we do. Oh, uh, um, um, Apple M1 machines, sorry. Yes, M1, it will be later in the release blog post. So let me start yes. sharing again and let me try doing a tab again. Maybe this will look better. Okay, we are back on about heat dumps in native image and a few quick updates related to the native image as well. So one is that we added now support for software bill of material in native image. So that is called VM Enterprise feature. And it is supposed to aid vulnerability scanners in a way that it will include a list of components used in a software artifact. So currently we support this one Cyclone DX format and you can enable it by using this flag you can see here on the screen. Uh, Fabio, I think you wanted to talk about this feature as yeah, well. I, I think this is I think this is great um, for for enterprise customers um, because you can uh, you can get a, a software bill of materials for all the method and classes that are included 
um, in your native image, and it's actually embedded within that image. So uh, you can distribute your uh, native executables, and someone else can can run a vulnerability check on it. I think this is a uh, this is pretty useful. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's also this native image inspect tool that is uh, available with Gravium Enterprise. That if you don't need uh, a software bill of material, you can just get a list of all methods included in a different format. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually also super excited about the next item, which is improved debugging support. Um, yeah, we are collaborating here okay, with, my, uh, my with connection Red Hat. Is breaking. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, are back? Alina, can you hear me? Okay, well, Alina just dropped. I'm pretty sure she'll be back in just a bit. So let's see. Uh, here's the blog post. And yeah, I, I just, uh, I just, I was just about to say that I'm very excited that, about this, uh, this other item here in the release uh, blog post which is uh, on improving uh, debugging support. We're actually working here with uh, the Red Hat folks and, uh, and uh, other uh, uh, contributors. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we have uh, yeah, um, implemented support for parameters and local variables uh, during debugging, um, which, is, which is really, really useful. And that sh should show up in your uh, debugger. And in terms of debugging, um, yeah, we are also collaborating with uh, the JetBrains folks uh, and uh, building a new native image debugging experience right into IntelliJ. So that means, um, yeah, you have a, yeah, check out the early access uh, build from IntelliJ IDEA and uh, where you can download this new extension um, that allows you to debug native images or native executables from within IntelliJ. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll, uh, we'll improve debugging in VS Code and other IDEs uh, soon as well. So this is, I think, really good news. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get uh, more updates very soon um, on our usual challenge, uh, channels. Hey, Alina, you're back. I'm back. Sorry. So connection issues, but hopefully it should be fine now that you're screen sharing. It's all good. Yes. So, so shall, we go on? shall we go to the compiler section? Uh, we should. Um, I just want to quickly check for questions, but I don't think more questions related to native image. And we have some about R and Python compatibility, but maybe we can ask for that when we get to Python, because we have some Python updates as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we, yeah, let's talk about the compiler. So a couple of things there. The first one is that we are now, uh, we have now reduced memory usage in Golium 22.2, and that is for when your application warms up and reaches some stable state with fewer or no compilations happening at all. What we are doing now is that with the Graal compiler will now release that unused memory back to the system. So overall, you should see less memory used by the Graal compiler when running in the JIT mode. Uh, that is one change. And as you can see, reduced memory usage or other requirement is kind of a theme across this 22.2 release. So happening in the compiler part as well. And another one, as always, we have some new optimizations in the compiler. So uh, in this release, one of them is this new strip mine optimization for content loops that converts one single long running loop into a nested loop. And this way we are reducing the overhead of safe point polling by putting the safe point in the outer loop. So uh, below we have a quick example. And as a result, we expect to see around 20% increase in speed on certain kind of workloads, especially those that are doing the foreign memory uh, access API usage. Uh, and one more thing, Related to this optimization, it should also be special for truffle languages. And in this release, as this is a new experimental optimization, it is not enabled by default, by, but you can enable it by using this common line option. And as always, we would appreciate you checking it out, giving it a try, and then sharing your feedback, your performance uh, improvement reports, or any other feedback you have with us on GitHub or on our community Slack. 
so that is one optimization. And also we have another one that is global value numbering for fixed nodes early in the compilation pipeline. So it will improve workloads that require complex partial escape analysis and enroll optimization. And also what is interesting, it can also uh, speed up native image builds and accelerate the produced native executables themselves. So again, this is a new optimization, not enabled by default, but you can enable it again with this command line option that you see here on this screen. So give it a try, what do you think? We will appreciate your feedback. Okay, so any questions or feedback on this so far? No, I didn't see anything in the chat. So I'm yes. guessing we can now. Yeah, so the question about which features are community and which are enterprise, but I think everywhere we specifically mark when something is enterprise or whether it's also available in community. So you can find this in the release blog post and in the release notes as well. Uh, so yeah, should we move on to Apple Silicon? Yes. Probably? Yeah, one of my favorite topics. We are finally supporting Apple Silicon builds on Gravium Enterprise. Well, this is experimental, and the same is true for Gravium Community Edition, but we initially shipped those with the last release uh, just in community. So now you can use um, Gravium Enterprise on uh, your Apple Silicon machine. And uh, yeah, we're also expanding the number of components that uh, can run on on M1, so now there's uh, JavaScript, the LLVM runtime, and the toolchain, as well as Ruby. So Truffle Ruby has no support uh, for uh, M1 chips, uh, Java on Truffle or Espresso, and then uh, WebAssembly as well. Did I miss anything? No, sounds good. I said probably this will be one of uh, the features for the most, right? Because in the previous release, 20.1, many people said that they really uh, we're super happy to see us finally supporting Apple Silicon. So hopefully they will be also happy to see more components available on the platform. And also I think this is one of the most uploaded issues in our GitHub repo, right? Like created by you, Fabio. So <laughs> plenty of work and contributions happening there. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that people are so happy about support for this platform. Yes, and we are we are expanding. So we we want to uh, add support for debugging to native image uh, for uh, macOS machines. Uh, we also am working on better support for Windows. So stay tuned. Um, Apple Silicon are not the only target platform for us. Uh, others are just as important. And uh, yeah, there's going to be more updates hopefully very soon. Oh, shall we get to talk about uh, Graal Python? Yes, about time. Let's talk about it. Uh, so yes. I, can, I can begin or you can go ahead. I don't have no, you, Please go ahead. Yeah, so one thing is we added this new experimental bytecode interpreting role Python, and we expect to see better startup performance, better interpreter performance. It's not enabled by default yet. So in this release, what we have by default is still the previous AC interpreter, but you can enable it by using this command line option. Yep. Uh, yeah, VMs are usually VMs are usually full of uh, uh, trade-offs, and um, we we've noted that for in some cases AST interpreters uh, require more uh, memory, and uh, well, bytecode is just much more uh, efficient. And uh, yeah, we here we're experimenting with well, not just in Graal Python, but in general we're experimenting with uh, bytecode uh, interpreters. And there's an interesting pull request open on uh, on the public. Um, uh, uh, on our main repository on the operations DSL, which is automating some of that uh, bytecode interpreter work. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can move this forward. And Graal Python is obviously a very good candidate. Uh, and we want to support um, bytecode interpreters because yeah, we, we need to be compatible with bytecode formats. Um, and we... Uh, uh, yeah, they also make for much better interpreter performance and uh, while still providing the same peak performance. And uh, that's uh, that's just one example. But I think in, in Graal Python, yeah, just like in other, um, in other languages, uh, we, we're showing that we are contributing not just to Java, but also to other language ecosystems. Okay. So in, in Graal.js, for instance, we're contributing to the ECMAScript uh, co committee um, and so the standard for JavaScript. Um, and here in, in Graal Python, uh, yeah, we are mentioning this HPy project, 
So HPy is um, is a new um, FFI um, API for um, yeah connecting Python code with C, and um, this is uh, this is something that you are going to read more on in our blog uh, very soon. Um, there's something already in the pipeline, and the Graal Python team is is uh, working a lot to make uh, Graal Python even more compatible with more libraries such as uh, NumPy, SciPy, TensorFlow, Matplotlib and so forth. Yes, sounds good. And maybe you can also answer, I cannot bring it back because I needed to reconnect, but there was this question about R compatibility and Python compatibility, right? So as you said, yes. in terms of Python compatibility, it's work in progress, right? So we are working on making more libraries compatible with Perl Python, and we are making progress with each release. So stay tuned. And I think you can also access the list of already tested and proven to be working libraries when you are using Graal Python, right? So yes. that is one. In terms of R, it's quite far along in terms of compatibility, right? So I, I think you can expect most libraries to work with our R implementation, if not all. So if you want to use some specific libraries in R on Graal VM, you should be absolutely able to do so. Give it a try, report it back to us. But I think libraries should work, most of them, if not all. Yep. Yep, sounds good. And I don't think we have any more questions about this. So we talked about HPI. We will have even a bunch, so a series of blog posts coming up. So stay tuned, maybe even this week. Yes, and I think <laughs> that's all. Uh, should we move on to draw guests? Yes, last item on the list, I guess. Almost. So we also have community contributions. Yes, we do. You want to talk about Graal ah. GS, I think? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I can do this. Yeah, sure. So in, in, uh, in the new release, um, we have uh, changed the way how uh, foreign objects appear in JavaScript. So they now come with a JavaScript prototype. And that means when you're passing, let's say, a Ruby list, to, to JavaScript, you can now use JavaScript methods on that list. And that works for not just lists, but also for other things like functions and other JavaScript types like maps. And uh, that makes, uh, well, that, that sounds like a very niche uh, feature, but it's actually very, very important because it makes for much better portability. So much more JavaScript code will now work uh, with, uh, Java, with Ruby objects or uh, Python objects or, or some other uh, GraalVM supported language. And I think uh, think this is very good news. And as we already mentioned in the blog post too, there's going to be a follow-up on this very soon. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll update you on this uh, very soon. So now the last item, I guess, right? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly add about uh, GraalJS. So there was no question about GraalJS, but I did want to say a few words compat about compatibility because they were asked about other languages, right? So in terms of compatibility of our JavaScript implementation, we are even further along. So we have a uh, fully uh, compatible with the latest ECMAScript standards implementation of JavaScript. So if you want to use JavaScript and GraalVM, you can be absolutely sure that it will work just fine with any libraries you want to use. So just wanted to quickly repeat that in case somebody was asking about JavaScript compatibility. And let's talk about community contributions. So I can say a few words about that. So with each release, we receive a lot of community contributions in terms of PRs, in terms of issue reports, performance reports, and we are very grateful for that. There are so many in this release. Just a few that I wanted to specifically mention is improved debugging support on Linux that was contributed by Red Hat, and we already mentioned that previously, right? And that metadata repository that we also mentioned before was built as a collaboration project between us at Oracle Labs, Corpus, and the Spring Boot teams. So thanks to them for that. And thank you all for your community contributions to the project. This release would not have happened without your help. So I think that's it. Uh, you have a few minutes maybe to ask us more questions. Fabio, should you maybe also show the GraalVM org downloads page to show people where to get what builds from? Yes. So if you go to the landing page, click the download button, and then you can go and pick either community or enterprise. Uh, enterprise is an OTN. Uh, and uh, here's the GraalVM enterprise JDK. 
And when you click here on uh, downloads, you get to see the GitHub uh, downloads. So here's the JDK based downloads with instructions for the different platforms. And then you can install native image uh, or any of the Gravium languages uh, using the Gravium updater as, uh, yeah, in, in, as explained on our website. And um, there's also Docker images um, that you can use um, either in the GitHub container registry or in uh, OCR. And um, yeah, um, there's also Homebrew that you can use to install it. I'm pretty sure the SDK man folks are going to update the database very soon with the new release. So you can use SDK man to install uh, Gravium as well. And uh, yeah, uh, go and go and check out the release, uh, bump your updates uh, for your uh, GitHub actions because you'll be able to build much larger Java applications in these uh, environments. Uh, and uh, yeah, take take uh, the new release for a spin and let us know what works and what doesn't and how we can improve. Um, yeah, Alina, yeah. anything else yeah. to add? Yeah, thank you, Fabio. I just wanted to say that, as you can see, we already have builds and docs available on the website. So huge thanks to our docs and release team for making this available for all the users. And we do have a question there, right? So after the release, uh, so is there a roadmap available for the next release? So I have yes, that is, that, that's <laughs> so a very good question. Yeah, uh, so in terms of roadmap, so uh, what we have on the website, we have a page called Roadmap, and you can see what the next releases are coming now for quite a few releases uh, ahead, right? So I think at least like four more maybe releases. Okay, we need to maybe add more now, but there are some available. And in terms of specific features that will land in the release, what you can do is you can go to our, yeah, maybe you can see. Yeah, you probably should add more at this point. Yes. And in terms Specific features, what you can do is you can go to our GitHub, right? So as you know, GraalVM is an open source project. Our development is happening on GitHub. And on GitHub, you can track what will land in upcoming releases, either in PRs or also they have this projects feature where there are specific focus areas we work on. And you can see what things are in progress, what is done and what is to be done. And we are planning to add more projects like this in the future. So uh, either PRs, and we try to also put target version in them, or you can check projects to see what is uh, coming up next. Uh, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I, th I think uh, this is a very uh, good question because uh, yeah, I, we can certainly Im improve here. And uh, I, th I think we're going to put up a dedicated list of uh, like the major items very soon too on GitHub. Uh, we still need to figure out whether it's a project or a discussion or an issue. But um, yeah, I'm, in, in terms of new features, I already mentioned um, native image debugging. That's a, that's a big thing. So we want to support uh, not just uh, Mac OS, but also Windows, and not just uh, Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ, but also other uh, debuggers in, in the future that integrate with GDB or LLDB. Um, in, in terms of uh, uh, Java um, and, and monitoring APIs, we want to yeah, try and push feature parity as, as far as possible so that you can use your Java monitoring systems, for instance, um, even though you're deploying a native executable. Uh, so that's that's also a, a big thing. And there's more uh, going on in terms of um, uh, tracking builds, native image builds. So uh, already on master, there's a new feature uh, contributed by Red Hat as well that allows you to export what you can see in the build output as a JSON file. And based on that, you can you can track your builds over time. So um, yeah, we are looking to, to expand that. And the same is true for uh, the Gravium dashboard. So you notice I talk a lot about native image. So There's definitely going on a lot in the native image team. But the same is also true for uh, Truffle languages and especially Graal Python. So I, I would expect uh, Graal Python to become much more compatible very soon, much faster. And yeah, we'll see where this takes us and, and uh, what we can do uh, with all of this uh, technology. But I, I'm, I'm uh, very excited to be working with this, uh, with this team. Uh, and, and I think this release demonstrates that uh, yeah, we, can, we can do some uh, really cool stuff uh, with uh, with the uh, GraalVM and the Graal compiler, native image, and uh, and the Truffle languages. 
Yes, I agree. So definitely uh, all, the, all of the things you mentioned, right? So developer experience was uh, kind of a theme of a couple of releases that we recently published, right? Also the performance work as always, specifically around native image. So if you recall a, a couple of releases ago, we published measurements where native image on Golden Enterprise in kind of peak configuration, right? So this PGO and G1 is comparable to running on multiple VM in terms of peak throughput. So that is one of the areas of work, but also compatibility across all the languages as, as well. Uh, There's I mean, another question that I that I just brought up uh, from Alan regarding improvements for GUI native image. I'm guessing this is about um, GUI uh, frameworks like Swing and AWT, which is uh, a, a common issue that uh, people run into. The problem is that these are essentially the not, not the worst case scenario, but they re require reflection uh, everywhere. So that means you will always, you probably always will need to run them uh, with a trace agent to, to track your, the reflective calls into your code that you're building in AWT and Swing. But the good news is that uh, the um, support for Windows is, is very good. We are dynamically linking against uh, libAWT, for instance, and, we, um, and that works quite well. Uh, it kind of works with a, J, um, with a JDK 17 on Linux, but there we are still uh, statically linking um, against the lib AWT stuff, and we are going to move to uh, dynamic linking very soon, well, hopefully very soon. And once that is done, we want to take uh, the same approach to macOS and uh, get AWT and Swing code working on that platform as well. But like I said, you will need to run with a tracing agent and, and provide appropriate configuration because these frameworks make uh, have heavy use of uh, reflection. Yes, okay. and we have some other feedback, right? So thank congrats for the great release. Thank you, Michael. And I also got some more feedback in my DMs. So as we ask people to take this release for a spin, some people already did, and they are reporting the results back to us. So they said that they reran their project and the memory usage went down from 4.7 gigs to 3.6 at peak. So they are super happy about it. Uh, give it a try as well and tell us what you think. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, and we, you can reach us on um, the Gravium Slack. A link is on the, on the main repository and even on the website. Uh, let's see, uh, where is the link? It is uh, right in here, for instance. There's just one button. You can join our Slack. You can uh, yeah, mention us on, on uh, Twitter. Uh, usually either from us uh, will re respond. Uh, we can also discuss things on Twitter, on Slack. Uh, so feel free to reach out, uh, open issues on GitHub. And uh, yeah, let us know how it goes. Okay, I think we're good and we are almost at the top of the hour, so maybe we can end this stream. Uh, if you want to read more about this release, the blog post is up on our Medium page. We will now go ahead and announce the release on our social media platforms mailing list so you can read more about it. And uh, we will also save and publish this stream on our YouTube page, so stay tuned. Um, thank you all for attending and thank you, Fabio, and see you all next time, I guess. Thank you, Alina. This was fun. See you next time.